Hi, welcome back. So let's revisit before going to less on this simulation, SRS simulation. Let's revisit again some post-processing concepts. So let's load again the, the, the case, the quartz mesh. Uh, let's load the case directly. So I will do it here so you can follow me. So I have the mesh there. So go into cases, quartz, and I will load, for instance, the Uran's case. Okay. So we have the quartz mesh and with the setup already. Okay, so we have only the case setup and mesh. Now we're going to revisit you know, the, the interpolation. Okay, how to interpolate for a previous solution. So we have the mesh here, everything pretty fine. So remember to interpolate a solution here in interpolate, you need to previously save that solution, this interpolation file, and then you can choose the file, whatever, whatever file you want to interpolate. So here in interpolation files, you have a few of them. So for instance, I have a decoars case here. You can interpolate for, from the uh, fine mesh. Okay. I don't see any reason to go from quartz to, to from fine to quartz, but you can do it with no problem, even different domains. And we interpolated that solution. Okay. As you see, it's very fast. Even if you have a, a large mesh, this interpolation is it's really fast. It's very efficient and see that we're, we're taking the solution from the previous case or for whatever case we took, we're interpolating, interpolating this one. And now we can go and run this case. So as usual, just save those files. Now I have some backup here, so I will cut it. Uh, new one. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, so let's see the setup we have. So we have gone through this. Okay. Previously in the Uranus transient, we have a model here. There is no problem. Let's keep the model or if you want, you can change it. There is no problem. So we're going just to run a few time steps. So everything here is okay. We have the method on a steady. So remember that the couple for on a steady is quite a, quite expensive, but sometimes you, you may use it when you have a strongly coupled physics, but in this case, piece is perfect. Uh, I mentioned that it's recommended just to use second or uh, in, in new runs, you can go for the tooling, tooling variable first order, but ideally you should get everything second order for good accuracy. So previously we, we, we run uh, first order. So now let's go everything fully second order. So here also second order. So put it there. And this going to second order, it won't add much computational overhead. The only thing is that it, your solution might become a little bit more unstable. So you will need to probably reduce your time step or control on the relaxation factors just to avoid some oscillations. Spudious oscillations. We have all our monitors. Uh, we don't need to initialize. We interpolate it. Uh, let's run. <clears throat> let's run. So let me put 0 0.2 here. That I know it will be something about 1, 1 1.2 CFL. Okay. So here is you want to control change the number of maximum iteration per time step. You can put it here. So usually 20 second value. <clears throat> Is, is your <clears throat> time step is taking more than 20 iterations, you, it's better you should reconsider reducing your time step, but there is no problem. You can get, you can take more. Okay. So we did in the previous tutorial. So it's up to you. It's a compromise and you should, you, you should see if this takes less time per iteration than using lower time step. So I would put this one 20 and let's run probably just 10 time step. Okay. So I will evolve the solution. We're going to do just post processing. We'll revisit the dictionary and let me go calculate. Okay. So we are going to do the post processing just to show you again, the Q criterion, vorticity, some vectors, uh, plotting velocity in cut planes, also the Y plus Y star. And so other additional quantities, for instance, if you are using the uh, old, uh, <coughs> early, uh, earliest version of Fluent, we're using 2020, we're using 2019 and, and older, uh, the Q criterion might not be available for you if you are not using scale resolvance simulations, namely uh, less or death. So I will show you how to compute it with uh, uh, custom fill. Okay. Then also we are going to compute, uh, Delta X and Delta Z. Okay. So those will be the equivalent to Y plus. And let me show you here those quantities. So this one we're going to address later in the lectures, but see that we have the Y plus 
here we know what is this value very well and then we have delta y plus will be twice this one okay and then we have these two distance so in the sky scale resolvable simulations it is highly recommended also to compute these ones and get good values to see if you are resolving well your your, your field so there are also limitations in this quantity they comp they are competing in the similar way to y plus or delta plus okay but in this distance and you use delta x or delta z to approach to get the quantity okay so these quantities can be accessed in fluent or whatever solver or you can approximate using those uh the cubic root of the volume those approximations is quite good and there are some limitations so usually you are well uh well resolving your y plus should be less than 10 probably less than five properly and then these two quantities should be less than 40 and if you are well modeling here we, we we need to impose this limit in y plus quantities okay it cannot be more than 300 okay here is just a hard limit for accuracy reason obviously and then this one is four times the delta y plus remember delta y plus, y plus is twice y plus okay so we're going to address that later but just we have this this reference so here we run a few times it and let's go back and post process solution so i want to plot also in the square here so we have magnitude everything you plot okay i am seeing there the line i don't want to plot that line so we have velocity plot there so you can go for instance also in velocity you have all your fields available okay the ones that depend on the velocity tensor okay so you have velocity vorticity magnitude you have the whole tensor here actually so you have all the components and you have the q criterion as well so you can see in a cut plan but usually we use it as isosurface and it's a positive value Usually something positive like between 100 and 1000, but depends on the problem. Okay, uh, what else we can plot here? Okay, you have your, all your fields, your own steady statistics. You have derivatives here, just to remind you that you have this trend rate. So using this trend rate and using also vorticity magnitude, as you recall, we can compute the uh, Q criterion. So if it happens to you that you are using an older version of fluent there is a way to compute you have here the vorticity magnitude to compute the q criterion so let's compute those quantities okay and then we're going to plot also y plus what the star so uh, y plus so you go here parameters customization just new and you can add those new fields so the y plus for us will be computed is, is you look at lecture eight there we have the definition but let's do it will be 0 0.5 times and there will go velocity you have velocity magnitude uh, vorticity magnitude sorry okay no, no velocity vorticity magnitude uh, ta -ta. so that this quantity is square minus oops no okay but minus you go into derivative you have this very important quantity strain rate which is magnitude as well there the square just closer and this will be the q criterion the new one the one that we're defining so i will call it q yo define and we have it there so just to remind you that is an user surface, so here results, create, or you can go here directly, surface, new, and you have ISO surface, up to you. So we do it here, ISO surface. In my domain, okay, and I want to compute, let's go first with velocity. So in 2020, Fluent 2020, you have it here. Will be Q criterion, okay? And you can choose a value okay so remember it's a positive value i know that in this case it will be 100 what you can play with that that range so we have q criterion one you create it here and let's plot the second one that we computed is the custom field function you have it here again it will be similar okay you have it there and we go into contours see that you have it here the iso surface so if you plot the first iso surface okay let me erase everything else so this is the one computing in fluent. You see that we're coloring by velocity contour. So you can use pressure 
Okay, so col color it by pressure and you have the Q criterion, okay? This is the one con computing internal flow. Is you use yours, this one? Pretty much the same results, okay? So see that if you're using older version, you just saw how to compute it. And if you want to compute yours, you can also compute it, okay? So this is how we get the Q criterion that will give us the, the vertical structures, okay? So the, the next thing that I want to do, let's plot at the walls. In this case, the only wall that we have with boundary layer is the cylinder. Remember that as you go here, turbulence, you got your axis, white uh, wall, wall, white star, and wall, white plus. Okay, so remember that these two are very similar. Okay, so as you plot it here, you will get the white star, or you can get your y plus okay this one they are very similar so the thing that you want to point out here that we can compute also in the old in the direction spans wise and string wise okay so let me plot the mesh there so I see that here this mesh the aspect ratio is very large okay so we know that the resolution is not very good in this direction, it spans wise, let's say. But we can compute the uh, the aspect ratio. So we, we can compute the aspect ratio here. Okay, so this quantity again, uh, as you go here in mesh, you should have that quantity available, but not by default, This qu that quantity is not available. So remember that you have the text user interface that many quantities there are hidden from the user. Just the, the most important one are shown. So just to show you, for instance, you go into mesh and then you have the action. Oh, uh, uh, you will have check verbosity. So you go check. You will choose a level of two and this one will give you access to more, more information in your mesh that now you can access. So you go back to contour. Okay. Um, mesh you will see here that you will have somewhere okay you will have aspect ratio okay and see that it will give you that your aspect ratio is something about as you right click something about 11 which is very high as an aspect ratio okay so if you are going srs ideally you want to have something at most four times okay four so i mean would mean one dimension is four times larger larger than the other so at most 11 is too high so this is the quartz message you check the the finer mesh that level is about six or five it's still in the limit but it's much better than this one okay so you can get that quantity but let's plot now the delta x and delta z that is not available by default in fluent and most of the solver also they don't give you that quantity by default just to compute that one again it's a derived quantity you go custom fill new and we go that it will be a same the same quantity you know for let's say for for walls x and z so we go like this so let me do I like you always to put all the parentheses and everything. So I will do the S square root. And if I go here in mesh, I will get the face area magnitude. Okay. So that times, oops, del. So close here times Y plus value. Okay, turbulence, you get here, so let, and I close that parenthesis. And now I will divide this by the, you go back to mesh, and you will have there, here cell wall distance. So you have many quantities here, if you are in doubt, just go to the help, and you will see those quantities. So cell wall distance is the distance normal to the wall. So I will put this quantity, is you, you do your algebra, you put here your white pulse and everything, you will see that you will get the, the quantities for delta X and delta Y, okay? So 
important to say that here we're assuming that in our element in this in the world this this i area of the element is uniform okay but in this case it's not uniform so probably you can do correction so as you see you can access all many quantities here or you can correct it depending to which one okay so you will add a correction here four or five times whatever Okay, so here I'm kind of assuming that I have a mesh that is very isotropic, uniform, and I can use this approximation to get the area here. Okay, but in this case, it's not properly right, but just to mention, I want to mention, and I will call it dx, okay? And then I can go here, and you will have custom fills, and here you have it. So I plot this one, see that you have that quantity okay so see that you have the values about 300 in the spans wise also larger in the stream wise but probably there are more influence due to this bad resolution okay but here basically these are the other two distance okay so these two now we're plotting so this is very important in less and the in the and less and that's now you need to resolve as well these quantities and runs we didn't care okay kind of runs is not resolving the vortex situation is the one to properly resolve the vortex situation this quantity is also needs to be resolved and this is a way how how you compute it so as i told you it's not by default computed by fluent or many other solvers or whatever you use usually by default these quantities are are not computed so we computed these new quantities and that's all I wanted to show you before moving to post-processing uh, to less. Okay, well, probably the next video we're going to set in the mesh from scratch. Okay, now we're taking the mesh with the periodicity, but I will show you how to do it. And um, well, I hope you enjoyed this and see you next video.